How do you read you, my dear? Thank you, Alex. Ladies and gentlemen, test. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> You are the first woman speaker at the Open Society? No, there was Suzanne. Ever? No, I think Suzanne was here. Yeah. Last year. I didn't I ask any of you. I asked uh, Celeste. <laughs> He's no. so quick. No, we had Suzanne. The second ever <laughs> woman to speak at the Open Sip Summit. I don't know. Do I need, do I need the microphone? Yeah, the microphone. Can you, can you hear me? You would love to, but what? Yes, you can have a microphone. Well, you want to? I don't know if you don't know if you hear me. I just, well, you know what? Leave this oh, here. Because you don't have a pocket to snap it on. Okay. Can you hear it? Can you hear me well? Yeah. yeah. Okay. A little okay. higher. A little higher. I want to hear you better. Can you hear me better now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice. Thank you. So, guys. Well, what is success? I don't know if you <coughs> ever thought about it, if you ever ask yourself if uh, for you success is just a uh, high revenue, uh, fame on GitHub, maybe a very good customer base. Well, for me, success is being able to do something that I love and make me feel successful and fulfilled and that I, I can use the passion that I uh, that I have in things that I do, and not only the resources and uh, the assets that we can get out of this work uh, can give us the resources to inspire also others and uh, make other people live uh, our same dream. So being successful for me is uh, dreaming big, even when uh, everything looks like uh, it's going to be <laughs> very, very hard. Actually, there is the moment when uh, you got a, a dream bigger. And well, in this case, taking no as an answer is unacceptable in the route to success. But on the other side, we need to be flexible and uh, ready for a change because sometimes <coughs> being flexible and uh, change things, it's even harder than just uh, giving up. So making plans takes time, and uh, time means money. So is it even possible to make open source something so profitable out be, uh, and be able to uh, build a sustainable business uh, out of it? So this is what we try to, to do. Uh, when we started at KXIP, and we are talking about five years ago, uh, we started everything on top of an open source project, Homer. We had a great idea, and uh, we decided that we wanted to create from the beginning uh, an asset of a company uh, ready to look uh, forward. And uh, even before having just one customer, we decided to, to make a real company and have everything ready uh, for the day that uh, it would have happened. So we didn't have much experience or background in management or this kind of stuff, and I didn't have the time to go back to the university and uh, take a, a bachelor and uh, have a background and, and create the experience for that. So we decided to do what good programmer can do best, a reverse engineering effort and uh, take examples from uh, the real world, the big guys, the big companies and their customers, how they do, what are the characteristics of their company, and trying to build up the rule set that was working for us, that we thought would have worked for us. So like a goldfish in a bowl full of shark, we decided to jump on the ball and uh, try to make our ambitions and our idea a sustainable business. So as a company that is uh, based in, uh, in the open source, the first question that we ask ourselves, the first one at the beginning of in the title of the presentation, what if we succeed? Are we going to be able to actually sign that contract once that a nice customer, a big customer come and uh, want to buy our product, want, want our services. Well, the point of this presentation today 
is exactly the one to try to share with you guys a little bit of, uh, of our journey. Because for me, for us, Donkey XIP, open source means uh, transparency. And uh, in the years that uh, we, we worked to, to get here, we work with false assumptions, we did a bunch of mistakes, there were you know, things that we got to learn you know, with, uh, with our own hands. And uh, I think that is, it, it might be helpful maybe for some of you to avoid some mistakes or it might make it just, uh, just easier in the moment that you decide that you want to turn an open source project into an open source business, an open source company. So, what, uh, what we actually uh, tried to, to do was taking uh, some examples uh, in, uh, in the real world, and uh, th they are not so many, because in the end there is not a rule set that tells us how to build uh, and manage a, an open source company, an independent open source uh, company. So we decided to, to make this effort. But first of all, we need to understand if actually open source was, uh, was profitable. So, well, I think that today we can absolutely assure, be assured of that. We have a bunch of numbers can, uh, that can help us uh, to understand that. We can see how many repositories are on GitHub and who are actually the contributors, the main contributors of this uh, repository. <coughs> or I guess we can just uh, look in this room. I think each of us in some way is working in for, with, and paid by an open source uh, uh, project. So I guess it's OK to give a big applause for the open source guys, if you can help me here. I mean, it's just amazing, no? We, we made out of an ideal and a culture or something that uh, we can hold work and uh, make a life, no? How do it? So I think that's, uh, that's something that, I know, it's amazing. <laughs> so according to the State of Enterprise Open Source, that is a report that has been done by Illuminas and was sponsored by Red Hat. They went around the world and interviewed 950 IT leaders around the world, and they made a very interesting uh, interview. I just took uh, the part that I thought was uh, more interesting uh, for the purpose of the presentation today, but if you have some time and go to, ta uh, to, to have a look, they, they give some nice uh, statistics. But then, in the end, the point of it was that any IT leader today, leader that is working with or for uh, yeah. open source, nowadays see, sees the open source as something that is agile and strategic. So IT leaders nowadays, in general, they have to answer to the business request to, be, to modernize their business, modernize they, their product, and in the end have innovation and uh, what best that open source can be used to uh, to do this why <coughs> because we can have faster development cycle we can have experiments and uh, products that in the end that can have a faster time to market and we know time is money so whatever can get to production in a better more uh, much uh, better quality way or faster ways uh, actually um, chosen uh, either if the company is uh, working uh, or is an open source company. So we can totally assure that working in, in the open source is something that nowadays is profitable in, uh, in and for many reasons. But what is the difference uh, between uh, having just an uh, open source project or making an open source software and having people get uh, using it? or building a sustainable business on top of that open source software. So the first thing that I think we need to realize is that there is absolutely no difference between a normal company and an open source company, especially from our side, from the management point of view. So tax office doesn't care what is the moral and the culture that is behind the way and you develop your, uh, your software. And uh, I will have a couple of examples uh, uh, related to this about our experience here. So we learned that our cost, that is not, uh, is not um, 
uh, there is no difference, and uh, we need to stop to think that company, uh, open source company, or anyway, IT companies are made only by developer. First thing, people, people working in our companies uh, makes it all. We need managers, salesmen, graphic, also for the free stuff. Uh, it's, uh, it's something that we need to, uh, to understand as much as uh, we need to uh, take care of every department of the company and not only the research and development because once again you will need contracts, you will need a hand user license agreement, you will need a SLA, uh, nowadays we have uh, deep privacy uh, rules that we have to, to accomplish. At the same time you will need people to get to know and to get to use your uh, product so we cannot be uh, rely only on uh, on GitHub. We need social media. We need marketing. We need uh, financial and uh, promotional strategy if you want to build a business and uh, not just remain uh, just uh, just a project. So, in the end, solving uh, customer problems and uh, providing value to their business is the reason why we have business. So, if we think that around 20% of the all the IT spending uh, goes into projects that they don't even go into production and then we have around more or less well a little bit more than 50 percent of projects they, they get late into production but once they, they get uh, they, they get there they lack key functionalities they are obsolete so anyway they are not useful on the production point of view so uh, we uh, need to, uh, well, how we can uh, handle this uh, problem on our side? Well, we can handle it using the open source model. Why? Because the open source model, even when we are developing proprietary software, for example, it help us to uh, create a software that is made, that is customer based, so with uh, faster development and uh, production cycles, of course, uh, higher quality products, and this is something that IT leaders worldwide nowadays know. So uh, using the same kind of uh, uh, open uh, mentality, even when you are developing a uh, proprietary software, is something that we realized in our own uh, in our own in our own experience that give us a uh, great uh, um, help. Uh, from from different point of view. So, for example, one way would be keep open uh, part of uh, the proprietary software. So you don't need to uh, make everything open, or you don't make you don't need to make everything proprietary. So there is a way to keep open doors and uh, make other people, other developers, and uh, and way uh, your customer being able to use it and use it as a framework. So. Uh, not just uh, giving a product just uh, set, but giving a product that other people can shape it and frame it in the way that they are actually uh, need uh, to, to use it. Uh, another way is focus on, of course, on the customer, because in the end, they are uh, who pay for it. So what do you think, and the question that you need to ask yourself is, what do they pay for? What would they pay for? And one question to this is, for example, your experience. So why not uh, providing and uh, b uh, building up um, professional services uh, offer as uh, what we do and uh, what uh, I mean is asked uh, in, uh, in our uh, business uh, is to have a great experience and great competencies. And uh, this is also what we, we can give the best. So <coughs> give our best quality uh, insurance. And uh, on the other side, self-sponsor yourself. So be the Robin Hood of yourself. Use the biggest customer and the biggest project that you can handle to self-sponsor your, no, maybe uh, softer or weaker uh, side. And uh, this is the way how we kept Homer alive, guys. So if today we have Homer 7 and we keep developing Homer, uh, it's because we found that this was the best way to keep our company, our own company, don't sell not even one bit, make everything with our own efforts and with our own strengths, and uh, don't compromise anything. So keep our core open.
So why so? Because to make open source guys, it takes money and people also need to get paid. So I don't think that this makes it less open source. Do you think? Do you think this makes it less open source? Just because there's money involved? I think so. Open source is not free. The open source software might be free, yes, but open source is, uh, is absolutely not free. And the making money in the open source is not an insult, it's not immoral. We all have our own life, family, we need to pay our mortgages, and maybe we have also some, uh, you know, hobbies or uh, life inspirations. And I don't think that just because we work in the open source, we should not be allowed to have that. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, right? So, well, making and doing the money, making uh, open source, I totally believe that is absolutely not uh, immoral. And open source doesn't mean no profit. And open source doesn't mean charity. Those are other things. Totally good things, but it's, it's not open source. Building a team, this is something, another point that I think is very important in uh, building a company, is something that is very hard. In general, it's hard. I think uh, all of us knows how hard it is to make a team, but I think that in our realm it is even harder because we look for competencies, we look for experience, we look for expertise, but more and foremost, we look for attitude. Because working in the open source and uh, in uh, working in our world, I think that the way how people approach the work is the m most thing. Because you can fill up competencies, you can fill up the experience with more, more experience, but the character, the, I mean, you cannot change that. And I think that sometimes uh, we don't think uh, this on the, again, management point of view, because yes, it's hard to build a team, especially when the team needs to be remote. And in most of our cases, this is what it is in our, in our uh, world. But I think that most of the times we don't think uh, before, ahead, what are the um, uh, difficulties and obstacles in, do is in doing this in a remote way. Europe is not united as we think. Paying uh, tax wages and uh, making residence permits and stuff in this way for small companies like us that have just a headquarters in one country in Europe, it's semi impossible most of the times. So even when you are starting to, to build a team, you, I think that this impo is, important, is important to think this uh, ahead of time. Why, and I'm sorry guys, I have my notes, otherwise I lose my point. <laughs> so, um, you need to be uh, ready every time with all these things that we were just uh, talking before. You need to have contracts, you need to have your brochures, you need to have insurance, for example. As we were saying, are you thinking about uh, selling professional services? you got to have professional liability insurance. And sometimes having it on a worldwide coverage, again, for small companies like us, is semi-impossible. So this also will uh, yeah, drive you in uh, which customers you can actually end or what deals you can actually uh, close or not, or uh, you can risk to, to sign or not. So. When the customer asks for something, remember that if you're not ready for it, it's already too late. So if the customer asks you for an insurance, you cannot just build up an insurance contract like that. If a customer asks for a product sheet or brochure, I mean, if you're only developer especially, I mean, who's gonna write it? Who's gonna make it? So these things, you, you gotta think about, uh, about it before ahead. At the same time, you need to learn also how to say no, because uh, Sometimes, especially if you don't want to sell your soul to the devil and uh, don't compromise your, uh, your, your true belief and uh, you know the ideals that are behind your business, you will have to, 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 to say no. And uh, it's something that it happens, and it happened with us. Do you really think that Homer couldn't record all the audio or spy or 
that kind of features, sometimes you make a choice. The choice that we made, for example, was to prove and find a different solution to answer to a business need, and that was we can make monitoring privacy friendly. And nowadays, today still, we have Homer, that is a privacy friendly tool. Research and development, no matter what. We do experimental innovation. Uh, we, do, we are pioneers of the innovation. We cannot think that we know it all. Every day, every single day, we have occasions and we have um, experiences that help us to learn to make things better, more optimized, uh, more lighter. Uh, much nicer, more user friendly, and this is something that is uh, based and uh, part of the job that we do. Because again, uh, what we do is research and development, so we we don't know it all. We we got to be open, open for a change, uh, open to be flexible, open uh, to to again to say no and uh, to make our things uh, work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in the way that we, we, we actually thought about it from, uh, from, uh, from the beginning. So, we get more or less to the end of this presentation, and uh, well, open source culture. So, in the end, for me, this is the most important thing. My background comes from science of education, so for me, education is one of those words that I really, really, really care about. And I think that we are working, we have the luck to work in a community that uh, can uh, give us great opportunities. So for example, if somebody asks me, what do I do as a job? I don't, I'm not saying I am the CFO of PXIP at that monitoring, blah, 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 no. I prefer to use the occasion to say that I work in the open source and to explain what is open source and why, why open source might be a different way to be successful and uh, make your life different from the corporate system or what else. So for me, this is uh, a great occasion that I think everybody should, uh, should take and why? Because we have the luck again to work in a community that is a great community where nobody cares who you are, where you come from, are you female, are you a boy, what's your religion, what's the color of your skin, I, I didn't see in five years working in this community, I didn't hear or felt once that there was this point, but, and we are not numbers. None of us, I mean, we can, we know each of us by face and name, and the most important thing, in my opinion, is that each of us can make the difference. So we, we, are, we have this luck to work in a community where we, we can really make the difference, and I think that uh, you should not, uh, uh, lose any occasion uh, that you have to educate people, to teamwork, to uh, quality, and why not optimization, you like this word. So, in the end, what if you succeed? Well, I have more or less two answers to this. If you were ready, if you thought ahead, about all these things and even more because of course for the purpose of the presentation I just chosen a few points I thought were very important uh, in the transformation between uh, from a project to, to a company. But if you were ready, if you thought about before, uh, ahead about this, I think you should just go for it. Just go, take it, be successful, have fun, enjoy it all. If not, if you didn't think it through, I would suggest to stop one second, make things just uh, ready before going, because uh, yeah, uh, if uh, if you if really you don't you don't stop uh, ahead, you might fail <coughs> by by your uh, same success by, by your succeeding. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, I think we need more women speakers. I'll call some friends <laughs> for the next time. 
You can bring all the friends you want. <laughs> I don't think anybody in here. We'll complain about it, huh? Yep. <laughs> um, do we have any questions for Celeste? Go back here. Uh, first, thank you for the presentation. Uh, You're welcome, thank you. I, uh, uh, I, I had a question about the point you made about making money and that that's fine in open source communities. And I agree with, it, uh, with that, uh, with your theory, but um, the trouble with that usually is, is that sometimes you have to make decisions, if your livelihood depends on it, that are not beneficial to an open source project, but are beneficial to your money. <laughs> yeah. So, so how, how do you deal with that? Well, that is where we found a way to compromise things. So we have uh, projects that are fully open source. So Homer and the full uh, seek, seek capture stack is uh, fully open source. And then we do have our um, um, commercial uh, product. And we kept part of the, the commercial product open on purpose. So we... Uh, we, we have the uh, ability and availability to use either the open source and uh, commercial uh, software and make integration that would work for both. And uh, at the same time, we use the commercial software to uh, self-sponsor ourselves. There is something that I, want, I wanted to say and uh, I actually forgot <laughs> during the, the presentation. Uh, one thing that uh, we, we, we like to do, uh, or well, we, we use as a strategy, is that uh, we uh, make our, uh, let's say, the, the best features and the more ad uh, most advanced feature, uh, they come first on the commercial product, and by the time that those are actually paid back in terms of development effort that we put on it, and uh, time uh, uh, that we spend on it, we put and we uh, open them uh, and we put it on the uh, open uh, stock. So usually that comes with uh, more or less one year of delay, but again, we are very, very keen to not break this uh, balance uh, between the two. We have to pay our own uh, salaries, of course. We have to make the, mo the, the company uh, go goes on. But at the same time, we never and will never, uh, you know, compromise the open core we believe in. That's so not great with you. <laughs> Celeste, you said something that kind of touched my soul and reinvigorated me as a member of the open source community. You said that when people ask you what do you do, you don't tell them that you're the CFO of this or that you program this or that. You tell them that you work in open source. I want you all to be honest. When's the last time you replied to what do you do with that or something similar? Mm. Bad guys. Come wow. On. <laughs> the only reason why I'm here is because <laughs> it's open source. <laughs> no, really. You know I, I, I think it's important that. I actually think that it's more a social thing um, because a lot of the time the people that you're talking to know that you're an open source. As geeks, we don't have a lot of friends. <laughs> That's the result. So that might be it, but I encourage all of you, each and every one, that the next time you're asked what you do, that somehow, some way that you slip in and say, you know what, either I use open source tools, I'm part of an open source movement, let them know that you're part of a community of really intelligent people that love really cool crap. Most of us are good. Wow. <laughs> so let's give Celeste one more round of applause.